What a peaceful and inviting way to welcome me into your website. I almost feel like I could do breathing exercises while watching it. I don't want to risk mispronouncing your name, but I'm very impressed with your work. And the best part is that this whole thing is actually a menu. And when you click on a shape, it reveals a project this person has worked on. I certainly don't have time to get to all that today, but since I've been needing some Zen shapes in my life lately, I want to know how to recreate them. I know I'll need a wrapper, and I'll need to put seven shapes inside. I want the body of the page to take up all of the available area, and I want to place the wrapper in the center. I don't know what aspect ratio they use for their wrapper, but I figure the golden ratio is a good place to start. I'll give my shapes a default size and background color so I can actually see them. I want them to be able to move around freely like the wind, so I'll set their position to absolute. Since I'm using percentages for their sizes and positions, I need all of that to be relative to the wrapper rather than the whole body, so I'll have to set the wrapper's position to relative. I know that the position, size, and roundness are going to be shifting around a lot, so I'll tell those properties to transition smoothly. I'll also need to define how long that'll take and change the timing function to something other than linear. All right, they probably need some color now, but I have no idea what color palette I want to use. So let me pick out a random one from a site like this. One by one, I'll go through and assign them each a color. Now here's where things get interesting. As I'm watching these shapes morph back and forth, I notice a few different things are going on. The first is that there are three different configurations that these shapes can take on. The second is that within each configuration, the roundness of the shapes is also changing. Essentially, what I need to happen is for my code to randomly select a configuration and a roundness every couple of seconds. I'll start with the first configuration and the first style of roundness. I don't know the exact sizes and positions to use, but I'm just going to use the original as a template and try some random values until I'm happy with the end result. All right, how about configuration number two? Skipping over about 20 minutes of random attempts, here's what I landed on. And I see one of the styles of roundness is actually no roundness at all. So why don't I use that for roundness option number two? I can repeat this process for the remaining options, including the last set of roundnesses that actually involves varying the roundness on different sides of each shape. Now that I've got all the sets complete, I need to figure out a way to morph them between each other. I know I'll need a way to reference my wrapper, so let me select that first. And I know I want these changes to occur every few seconds, so I'll set up an interval that runs every 3000 milliseconds. Inside the interval, all I really need to happen is to randomly select a configuration and a style of roundness. Not a big deal. I can just copy and paste a random number function from Stack Overflow. There's just one last issue to take care of. Some of the combinations don't quite match up with the original. I need a way to restrict the possible combinations down to the ones I want. So why don't I just create a list of the combinations that work and exclude the rest? Now, instead of selecting completely random values, I can simply select a random pair from the list and use those values to update my data attributes. If I wanted to get even fancier, I could keep track of the last selected combination and create a new function that would guarantee the same one wouldn't be selected twice in a row. All that's left is watching our shapes taking a few deep breaths, and remembering that everything is going to be okay.